be distributed in some 20 minutes. So we are ready to start at last. Thank you once again for your patience in order to start our session. This, small, this hall is smaller, but it's quite crowded. And that really proves the fact that EPR and Latvia was quite an expected document, both for all the ministry, for state authorities, and for all the expert community, as well as NGOs, in order to have some uh, ideas and proposals and recommendations for uh, forwarding and ending um, different policy instruments and so on. So I hope that you have had uh, taken the copies of executive summaries and of the reports. So, we will cover chapter between one and third and three, number three, whereas these are chapters were more specific, uh, requiring another uh, event. And according to the ministry, I understand that that specific problems will be a topic for a workshop or even conference in autumn. And we are paying our attention to focus on chapter number three. What we can see here we wish to organize that like an amphitheater, meaning that we are panel this panelists here and listeners on the other hand, but that would be really active engagement in Brainstorm, not our popular music band Brainstorm in particular, but in such really environmental Brainstorm for discussion regarding recommendations and report itself. So we are conventional speakers uh, today here, but for the best benefit would be that we would really treat, irrespect, uh, treat equally those sitting here at the panel and in the audience. And this is really the forum or platform for exchanging our views for dialogue, not a monologue from the experts. And therefore, please, uh, if president is elected, notify everybody else. That will be one exception only. This is what we'll try to do. I would like to introduce our front people, so starting from the OECD team who had participating in the report and review. So apart from the general presentation, it was already provided by uh, the minister, but now we would really have a deeper insight by Ms. Ivana Kapotza and Natalie Zinhold. Um, Ms. Ivana was coordinating all the review on Latvia, and we have a Deputy State Secretary of the Ministry of Environment, I met Ms. Aldo as well, and the first chapter, conventionally, we have uh, uh, 90 minutes uh, to cover three topics. And first chapter is called uh, uh, Environmental Governance and Green Growth in general terms. So then Mr. Janis Brisga from uh, NGO Zelabrivivo or Green Freedom, and we will listen to him uh, on his vision regarding that specific chapter. Then we have uh, Green Growth and Policy planning as uh, chapter number two of our discussion, and we have uh, intergovernmental uh, coordination center, which is a state authority uh, to coordinate the cooperation among different stakeholders in public sector. And panel discussion for environmental governments and green growth in Latvia regarding the instruments and tools and incentives possible for really promoting green growth. And we have professor from the university. So we have three topics and we will try to really cover that so wide perspective of environment where we can talk much about many different issues. But for more structural view, uh, we have tried to uh, distribute into such three uh, topics.
topics. We have uh, our reporters on each topic, and let us see how that uh, structural organization flows. And so the floor is passed over to Minister, for some introductory words, as our community and audience is directly linked and associated yeah, yeah, with the environment, therefore, some more specific address would be needed. Dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to excuse myself. I will not be able to stay for entire session, but this is, uh, on the other hand, really support showed by myself as a minister to Miss Alda Ozwal. Otherwise, she will be alone, fighting alone against everybody else. She is ready, but this is her job. He is a civil servant. Dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to use our opportunity to extend my gratitude to the team of OECD as this is the first EPR for Latvia and we should ask why OECD is studying and reviewing uh, environmental um, factors and aspects. So OECD was established with the motto and slogan that cooperation would le uh, lead to uh, better lives for everyone. And we are living in reality like that, where people believe in cooperation and joint effort leading to more benefit. But unfortunately, many are not believing anymore. I'm not among themselves. Uh, those people, as I'm fully convinced that the efforts and environmental policy and challenges outside and beyond it uh, and solutions can be found only by joint effort working together, not by creating uh, barriers, obstacles, and even walls, but vice versa, finding and seeking for common denominators and how we can cooperate. Of course, Latvia is among the countries uh, being a part of a uh, common system. We are proud of being a part of a Western common organizational model, uh, partly represented by OECD as well, but with all the benefits provided by such membership in uh, the organi international organizations like that, and why OECD is talking about environment, about uh, G20 in Davos is discussing environment and climate, although they haven't done so in the past. But of course, um, um, threat to biodiversity, climate change and adaptation to climate change will turn into challenges in, uh, to economic growth as well. Currently, uh, climate change has significant impact on our lives, on humankind in general, and in Latvia as well. And that impact will grow larger and larger. But the question is what we can do in order to change the situation. And from that perspective, it is quite a logic for, logical for OECD to draft such EPRs for countries, and this is the first for Latvia as we are uh, newcomers to the OECD. And of course, OECD is uh, an organization able of offering so high quality experts. And grow, uh, green growth is among the actual and topical issues of OECD. For instance, last week, I also participated in the workshop in the conference at the OECD headquarters in Paris especially on uh, green growth issues. And that is a question what we can use. I truly believe that Latvia must stop thinking and perceiving environment, environmental protection and climate policy as something um, restricting us, limiting us at Empower is the key word. We can empower something, we can empower ourselves um, and to enable ourselves and our country how we will be overcoming challenges currently and in the future. The review 
with this uh, Startotsko national Assesses identity. Assesses so what uh, and uh, to what extent Latvia's performance, performance, performance in terms of international commitments within international organizations and unions have been. Of course, it's quite clear that we are living uh, in the situation where waste management system is much better than a decade ago. We have a better situation in well, waste water treatment and elsewhere. Air pollution is an area where we have uh, still heavy lifting to do, as well as in preserving biodiversity. We have been quite good in defining uh, protected areas, but we have been quite poor in our performance regarding biodiversity and preserving biodiversity. We are managing quite good well regarding issues where regulation must be stipulated, providing a status of protected area, but we are quite poor in regulation, uh, regulation and policy where change is facilitated and human change is facilitated. Humans are changing and adapting. I'm um, convinced that Latvian uh, society is waiting more than ready to act and stand or really perceive um, some threat and damage caused to environment. We are expecting much more for solutions in the future, and I'm happy about that. We have two specific uh, topics uh, as waste management and preserving biodiversity have been deeply uh, assessed and reviewed. We cannot manage uh, analyzing those uh, six chapters in total today, but we are quite good in time-wise time because the national development plan must be developed and drafted, a new task, and I've understood that New uh, environmental policy guidelines will be drafted, waste management plan for the next programming period will be drafted as well, and we'll have a new plan for circular economy. Also, climate change should be worked with, and partially it's also in my responsibility, but there's national energy and climate plan which should be developed. All this work should be done at the same time, and those are planning documents for longer period of time. So the question is, if we can't use this information, and we have very good analytical material in front of us, and the best experts, best outside experts, how proposed uh, their solutions, how our policies should be developed. So overall, this is a question to, with which we should be working with, and together with people here in this room also, to find the solutions to the big challenges on how do we see Latvia's actions we, in the field of environmental and natural protection as well as in climate policy. I really hope, and this is a time and this discussion, to me, the most important would be not to use this session to learn what's in this uh, report. There are more efficient ways how 60 people can sit in the same room and obtain information from review. A report can be read. and. Uh, of course, most of people know how to read. The question is what is important? What's important is to see solutions, specific policy steps ahead of us. What would help us? What would help us to tackle challenges? And, of course, What's even more difficult, of course, all things are important, but uh, the governmental decision resources limited. So what are priorities? We should agree what is what are priorities, what to tackle first, what to do this. 
and we should re arrange these tasks in a priority sequence. Again, thanks to OECD team for excellent work. Like I said, I cannot stay to the end of this session, but I already talked about uh, to OECD experts about these topics. Most of you didn't have such opportunities, so let's view this opportunity. Thanks to OECD for review prepared. And you know that uh, Mr. Guria is a representative uh, environmental performance uh, review not often it's also a sign from uh, OECD how much they see as a potential development territory regarding this area so thanks to you that you are here and let's use this opportunity thank you Thank you, Mr. Minister. And now, citing that the best experts that are out there, uh, let me give the floor to you both. I understood that Natalie is about to start, and Ivana goes next. Please. Good afternoon, and um, thank you very much for uh, organizing this. And we are really happy to uh, to be in Riga now to uh, go into more depth in uh, the main uh, messages uh, that we have uh, in the review. As uh, the minister said, uh, we are offering a diagnostic. Uh, we have looked at the Latvia environmental performance since 2005, and uh, we are also offering uh, some options uh, for. Um, tackling the challenges that are ahead of you. But as the Secretary General said, you know much more than we do about what is good for Latvia, and um, the next phase will be in your hands uh, to uh, decide what are the priority uh, recommendations that uh, you want to put forward, and uh, how to uh, implement them uh, is also uh, in your hands. So. Um, with that being said, I will uh, start with uh, the first part of the, uh, the presentation, and uh, Ivana will do the, the next part. So I will go uh, over the environmental performance, so I'll come back quickly on decoupling, on uh, climate mitigation, air pollution, waste and water management, and touch upon biodiversity. And uh, Ivana will uh, discuss uh, the uh, transition towards green growth. So on environmental performance here. Um, so we've discussed already this morning the, uh, the decoupled uh, of, uh, of Latvia with uh, many environmental pressure. And there has been remarkable progress. I think it's important to, uh, to continue to, uh, uh, to say that since uh, 2005. Uh, the dot red line here on this star chart show that Latvia's economy has rebounded after the uh, global economic crisis and has grown strongly since 2010. So in this context, it's even more um, commendable that uh, Latvia has managed to decouple its economic growth from environmental pressure and primarily emissions of greenhouse gases. Uh, this is the green line on, uh, on this chart. You can see that the, this green line is nearly flat since 2011, uh, while GDP, which is the dotted red one, has been rising. So overall, in 2016, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, which are here uh, showed without uh, LULU-CF, were slightly below their 2005 level. So 1.3% below their 2005 level. Now, another point I would like to highlight here is emission of PM 2.5. So this is the purple line. Uh, it has also declined, as well as energy supply, which is the blue line. Although energy supply peaked up again in 2015, you see the little upstick there. And this is mostly due uh, to increased use of diesel for transport. However, uh, the picture is not all rosy. So here you have that some environmental pressures have been increasing with economic growth, and this is despite the declining population. So these include generation of municipal waste and the use of nitrogen fertilizers. So this is the orange line and uh, the green line. 
So we can expect that uh, in the absence of swift policy intervention, some environmental pressure will persist with robust economic growth and rising income levels. So we are referring here to uh, waste generation and material use, uh, car use and related emission of uh, emissions and uh, pollutant, use of fertilizers and increased emission of greenhouse gases and ammonia from agriculture. There's also increased pressure on habitats due, for example, to urban sprawl and infrastructure development. So there are some uh, challenges ahead in terms of decoupling. Now, let's have a closer look at uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So I would like to highlight first here that emissions from energy production and use, this is the blue uh, stack, decreased between 2005 and 2016, and official projections indicate that they will decline further. And this is thanks to more use of renewables, higher energy efficiency, and cleaner vehicles. To note, however, that wood biomass already covers a third of Latvia energy needs, and further expanding its use can help reduce greenhouse gas emission, but may have an impact on carbon sinks land use, air pollution, water and biodiversity. The capacity of the land use sector to remove greenhouse gas emissions has dramatically declined between 2005 and 2016. So this can be seen by looking at the red columns. And the sector will become a, lar um, a net emitter of greenhouse gas by 2030 uh, due to increased logging, a forest aging and conversion of grasslands into croplands. So finally, uh, my last observation here is that uh, greenhouse gas emission from agriculture, which are in orange in this chart, have increased also and are expected to continue to rise with growing agricultural production and nitrogen fertilizer use. So therefore, uh, meeting long-term climate uh, goals consistent with the Paris Agreement will require additional efforts in agriculture and forestry, which both we understand and we are conscious of play a really key role in the Latvian economy. So now let me focus on the binding EU uh, targets for greenhouse gas emissions outside the EU emission trading system. So by 20 20 and 2030 on this chart here. So these targets, they cover emissions from buildings, from transport, from agriculture, waste, and small industrial and commercial facilities. Uh, they make up to 80% of all Latvia greenhouse gas emissions. So Latvia, as was said by the Secretary General uh, earlier, will mostly meet its 2020 greenhouse gas mitigation target for these sectors. Actually, it's plus 70% from 2005 levels. Emission from these sectors are projected to decline as from 2020 under the assumption that Latvia implements all the measures that are currently in the pipeline. So our review encourages Latvia to do so fully and timely. However, it seems to us that more efforts will be needed because Latvia will miss uh, the 2030 target even if all the implement measures um, are done correctly. So this is mainly due uh, to raising emissions from agriculture as we saw in the previous slide. Now here we have uh, a few recommendations on uh, climate change mitigation. So uh, develop a climate mitigation plan with expected sectoral contributions to emissions, mitigation and gradually stricter target. So you can start with some less stringent target but then improve and augment the ambitions through time. Improve also the knowledge of mitigation options in agriculture and forestry. There are lessons to be learned from how we can uh, be more efficient in these two sectors from uh, other countries. And the third recommendation in this slide here is uh, assess and quantify the climate mitigation and environmental benefits and impact of using domestically produced biofuels. 
Now let's move to uh, air quality. So air quality has improved a lot in Latvia. For example, people are no longer exposed to very high level of PM 2.5. That's the red area that has completely disappeared in the second bar uh, for 2017. Still, air pollution remains of concern, especially in the capital of Riga. There's nearly 90% of the population that is exposed uh, to levels of PM 2.5 that are higher than what the World Health Organization guidelines value suggests, which is 10 micrograms per cubic meter. This is much more than the average in the OECD, which is 49 here, as you can see on the chart. And this is why our review calls for strengthening implementation of air pollution control measures. Now, regarding uh, municipal waste, you have increased uh, waste recovery and invested in recycling infrastructure, and then you can see that the tendency is improving. In most recent year, it has focused on production of biogas and compost through anaerobic digestion of biodegradable waste in seal storage within the Getlini landfill near Riga. So this is shown by the shaded part in the 2016 and 2017 columns. This is certainly a, a progress and is commendable. But it still means that most waste go to landfill and only about a third is recovered. So there are countries like Germany, Denmark, Finland, and Sweden, where less than 10% of municipal waste is landfilled. So we believe that more could be done to accelerate the transition towards a circular economy. And this would require, first and foremost, reducing waste generation and strengthening the markets for recovered and recycled material. The EPR makes several recommendations to increase markets, for the circular economy, and I will name a few uh, later in the presentation. Now, regarding uh, wastewater treatment. So more people have access to good water and wastewater management services. 82% of the population is now connected to a wastewater treatment plan, mostly with tertiary treatment. So that's a big improvement. The remaining part of the population is connected to individual systems. In some areas of the country, these systems are not fully adequate to treat wastewater and avoid pollution. In addition, investment is still needed to upgrade the aging water infrastructure and ensure that access to good quality services in rural areas is there. So wastewater discharges and diffuse pollution from agriculture, for instance, exerts increasing pressure on water bodies. So this is a challenge. Now let me go to biodiversity. That's the last part of my presentation. I have a few slides on these. So here uh, you see that Latvia has exceeded the 2020 HE target for protected areas with more than 80% of land area under some form of protection. and more than 16 of marine waters under protection. So this is commendable. However, less than 40% of protected areas have a management plan, and most of them suffer from chronic lack of human and financial resources. So connectivity between habitats could be improved. Uh, to date, there have been only few green infrastructure initiatives. And what is worrying is the conservation status of a natural environment. So this is poor and it continues to decline. There's only 10% of habitat that has a favorable conservation status. This is the green color. And it compares to over 30% in 2007 and 20% on average in the EU. And the EU is the black diamond. The types of habitat that are suffering the most are forest, grassland, and peatland. The main pressures are land use change, fragmentation, again, infrastructure and urban sprawl, pollution, 
and agricultural expansion. So the conservation status of species now has also worsened over the years. So public financing for biodiversity conservation grew significantly in recent years from 2014 to 2017, but we believe that it's not enough uh, to address the pressures on ecosystems and to effectively halt biodiversity loss. So the EPR makes several recommendations uh, to enhance the effectiveness of uh, biodiversity policy in Latvia, and I will name a few shortly. So this is my last uh, slide, well, my last two slides, uh, on the recommendations on environmental management. So the first part is on air pollution, so improving your air quality monitoring system, enhancing the effectiveness and updating the air quality programs that you have in the Riga metropolitan area, regarding waste and circular economy, uh, certainly improving the transparency of extender producer responsibility system, encourage investment in high value domestic recycling, strengthen the market for secondary markets and recycled goods. Some tools exist like public procurement and increased regional cooperation. And uh, in this area, uh, having a good integrated information system that covers all ways and materials management is really helpful uh, to be able to have an informed policy design. On water, um, complement EU funds to ensure sufficient investment in upgrade water infrastructure, make sure that independent wastewater treatment systems comply with environmental standards, and on biodiversity, as was already mentioned by the Secretary General, um, swiftly develop your biodiversity uh, strategy and put resources, human and financial resources around that. That's a key priority. Um, evaluate the economic value of biodiversity and ecosystem services and the cost associated with their loss. It helps to have good numbers to uh, support the reform effort. Uh, develop management plans for protected area and especially for the areas where there are species that are threatened. And extend the use of uh, economic and voluntary instruments for biodiversity management, especially for the sustainable use of forest. So I will stop here and give the floor to Ivana. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Natalie. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. So I'll pick up where Natalie uh, stopped to say that the EPR, the Environmental Performance Review, argues that to accelerate the transition towards a greener, low carbon, and circular economy, Latvia needs stronger price signals. This is a sort of a mantra of the OECD. I mean, we say that to all countries, and the Secretary General repeated that uh, several times uh, this earlier this morning. This basically means uh, reducing distorting tax exemptions and rising tax rate on environmental beds. Now, if we look at these slides, this may seem counterintuitive if we look at the high revenue generated by environmentally related taxes in Latvia which uh, in terms of uh, uh, GDP is the third highest share in the OECD. Uh, the environmentally related uh, tax take, so revenue, has been increasing broadly in line with GDP growth. But high and increasing revenue from environmentally related taxes uh, is not necessarily an indicator of effectiveness. <clears throat> And uh, we can say, or our review argues, that green taxes have delivered few tangible environmental outcomes and have only marginally moderated energy, vehicle, and resource use. And these two charts here provide an example. Uh, the first chart shows that revenue from energy taxes grew with increased use of diesel, which is linked to more car traffic and the dieselization of the fleet. In, in theory should have been, you know, diesel use should have declined with higher taxes. 
The other chart shows that revenue from vehicle taxes rose because more vehicles have been sold since the end of the economic recession. The number of cars per capita in, uh, in, the, in Latvia is among the lowest in the OECD, which is a good news. But actually, with rising income levels, which is also good news, cars, uh, the, the, car, the car number is expected to increase. And <clears throat> we hope that the increase would be towards cleaner vehicles, because as things stand now, uh, close to 80% of the car fleet is over 10 years old, and normally older vehicles pollute more. Uh, but also the newly reg registered cars in Latvia, it's, uh, <coughs> it's the chart, well, <laughs> no, um, here, <laughs> uh, um, is, uh, it, it also the, the new cars in Latvia are the second most carbon intensive cars in the EU after those registered in Estonia. We understood earlier this morning uh, in talking with the ministers that actually the comparison with Estonia is particularly irrelevant. <laughs> so, um, but uh, uh, they, they also, the, the, the emissions of cars is also uh, above uh, 95 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer, which is actually the the horizontal axis and which is the target, the 2020 target. So it's very hard to get to this target. Uh, in 2017, though, Latvia has done a welcome move, which is to restructure the annual tax on cars and link it uh, to CO2 emissions of vehicles. Um, this is good to encourage the renewal of the fleet towards more fuel efficient vehicles. The EPR warns. Uh, uh, however, that a vehicle tax that is based exclusively on CO2 emissions um, without, considering other local air, uh, without considering local air pollutants can stimulate uh, further dieselization of the fleet and then can have an adverse effect on urban air quality. This has happened in other countries already as Ireland, and this is why some other countries have designed vehicle taxes that use both fuel economy, so CO2 emissions, and uh, local air pollutants like Chile and Israel. Moving now to carbon pricing. That's another issue that is very dear to uh, OECD. Um, only one quarter of CO2 emissions from fuel combustion uh, face a price above 30 euros per ton. <clears throat> this is a benchmark. This is what the OECD considers as a conservative estimate of climate change damage. Uh, Latvia puts a price on carbon in three ways. Uh, through the EU emissions trading system, which covers more or less 20% of uh, Latvia's emissions, uh, taxes on fuels, and a carbon tax. The carbon tax is part of the natural resource tax. Its rate is pretty low, however, because it's uh, less than 5 euro per ton for CO2 emissions. If you compare this with Sweden, that is uh, 120 euro per ton. <clears throat> also, overall fuel tax rates are relatively low and do not reflect the climate damage of CO2 emissions. Especially, we would like to highlight that diesel is taxed at a lower rate than petrol, despite the higher carbon content of diesel and the fact that the diesel vehicles usually emit uh, more local air pollutants, especially NOx. <clears throat> There is another reason why the carbon price is low, and this is because of various tax exemptions and discounts that are in place for diesel, oil, and natural gas that are used in various sectors, it can be agriculture, heating, industry, um, electricity generation. <coughs> I'm sorry. These tax discounts have resulted in increasing revenue losses uh, as shown uh, in, in the chart that is at my right. Um, Latvia also supported electricity produced using natural gas, which is a fossil fuel, uh, in energy efficient uh, combined heat and power plants. 
Uh, the chart shows that the two ways of supporting uh, um, combined heater power plants, so the mandatory procurement and the guaranteed payments for installed capacity, um, resulted in increasing transfers to producers that use a fossil fuel, and this meant also higher prices uh, of energy for uh, people in, uh, in Latvia. We understand that the system is now on hold, um, and, and it's being revised. Um, both forms of support to fossil fuels, so both these charts, I would say, tell us that there's something that undermines the carbon price signals and especially runs counter to energy savings objectives. So it discourages saving fossil fuel energy. <clears throat> price signals are weak also in the waste sector. So we focused on energy, now we move to waste. The landfill tax uh, in Latvia is still too low to encourage recycling and investment in alternative waste treatment technology. This chart shows that in countries that have a higher landfill taxes, less waste goes to landfill. And you can see Denmark, Sweden, Finland, but also UK and Ireland. <clears throat> the landfill tax is, is planned to increase, and this is a welcome development, uh, but this increase may not be enough to create the conditions for expanding the markets of secondary materials and recycled products. So these slides <clears throat> uh, put together the recommendations on, uh, on what we've seen so far. The review recommends to implement a broad green tax reform made of several elements. I'm not going through all of them because of time constraints. Uh, the key message is that a green tax reform, a broad green tax reform, would help encourage more efficient use of energy, materials, and natural resources, but also raise revenue that could be used to finance the country's high spending needs, for example on health, education and infrastructure investment, as we will see in a bit. <clears throat> the review acknowledges, and this is the last bullet point, acknowledges that there are problems in Latvia with energy affordability and that raising taxes and prices will have an impact on low income households. This is not a reason to stop because in a broad green tax reform, these issues could be addressed uh, also via the so social, targeted social transfers. So the second building block of Latvia's transition towards green growth should be major investment. <clears throat> the public sector in Latvia is the main source of investment uh, in the environment, in the main environmental sectors. Uh, the public environmental budget was severely cut during the economic recession. You can see the dip uh, in, in the chart. Um, it has increased with the economic recovery, but has not yet recovered the pre-crisis level. So overall, um, public environmental expenditure were about 1.5% of total government expenditure in 2017. <clears throat> you can also see from the chart that uh, there are two sectors that uh, absorb most of this uh, public investment and expenditure, that are the waste, and, uh, the waste management and waste water. <clears throat> so you will know that uh, environmental really, that, that Latvia has benefited a lot from uh, EU funds um, and actually environment related investment rely or have relied on EU funds. Um, this chart shows that in the 2014-20 uh, period nearly a third of EU funds are allocated to uh, environment, uh, uh, resource efficiency, low carbon economy, climate change adaptation and risk prevention, but also a part of these funds go to transport and energy infrastructure. So the part of transport that is sustainable and the part of energy uh, infrastructure that is sustainable uh, can also contribute to environmental and climate objectives. 
On the private side, however, um, environmental expenditure uh, has declined since the mid-2000s, especially in terms of investment, which is the orange uh, bit. Uh, over the whole period, over in the last decade, private investment accounted for some between 10 and 12 percent of total last year's in investment in environment. And this is because businesses have uh, a low propensity to invest in the environment. <clears throat> For example, these two charts show the results of, an, a, Euro, of a Eurobarometer survey. They say that fewer uh, small and medium-sized enterprises in Latvia declare to invest in environmental actions like minimizing waste, saving materials, recycling, saving water, energy, using renewables than on average in the EU. You can see uh, from the chart on my right that actually Latvia is as a shorter column for on all these dimensions. <clears throat> the lack of demand, I, I put a, uh, an arrow, a green arrow, the lack of demand for cleaner products and services uh, seems to be the major barrier to environmental investment. This indicates that the current policy mix of regulations and market incentives, so the EU ETS carbon price, the carbon tax, the fuel taxes, um, all these market incentives have not stimulated business in investment enough. And this brings us back to the need of strengthening price signals. Um, business have an incentive to postpone investment uh, and wait for public funding opportunities. Uh, but this has a risk, and the risk is that public funds are used for investment that would be made anyway, so even without public support. Can you tell me how much time do I have? Yeah. So I will just, uh, I, will, um, I will highlight uh, a few messages on uh, transport and energy. <clears throat> because despite heavy investment, uh, investment needs remain high, especially to provide good quality services to rural area. Um, the quality of transport infrastructure is relatively poor in Latvia, uh, even though Latvia has the longest rail, uh, rail network in the Baltic states, uh, you know, most train run on diesel and roads are still unsafe uh, and of poor quality. At the same time, uh, car traffic has markedly increased. I will skip the number here, but I will tell you that this is partly linked to the lack of uh, um, public transport between uh, Regan and its neighboring um, uh, municipalities, which means that many people uh, commute to Riga to work by car. <clears throat> there's not just Riga, there's also peripheral areas and rural areas in which, uh, you know, buses have difficulties to, to, to provide services at low cost because the population is sparse. <coughs> so public transport is definitely a challenge. Energy efficiency in houses is also a challenge. Uh, it's still uh, consuming um, apartment buildings in, uh, in Latvia, still consume much more energy per square meter than in other northern uh, European countries which face a similar um, climate. There are many uh, barriers to invest in energy efficiency in buildings and the review provides some recommendations on how to address and overcome these barriers. On the brighter side, I think this was said already um, today, Latvia is among the OECD leaders in the use of renewables. Most of it is biomass. This is also the result of the generous support system to renewables, which is currently on hold precisely because it was too costly and not particularly transparent. And also here, the review recommends how to improve that. 
And I will finish here and, uh, with uh, a list of uh, recommendations that are about improving the cost effectiveness of public spending in Latvia to reduce the reliance on EU funds. Uh, there is a recommendation on an integrated uh, public transport system that links Riga to the uh, municipality in the metropolitan areas. There is a recommendation that in DPR is much more precise about the support renewable energy, uh, the support to renewable energy, and also a recommendation about improving residential energy efficiency. Now, I will uh, stop uh, here for time reasons. Thank you very much. No <laughs> quite. Thank you for this detailed report. Are there some quick questions to the speakers from OSCD and the authors of these reports? Okay, they are coming. Let us to move to the next part. We have 15 minutes time, so there are three blocks to cover, so 10 to 15 minutes to each, but uh, before I invite uh, Mr. Janis Brisga to report, I wanted to, to do a quick survey. We, we, we usually in conferences it's not recommended to use mobile phones, but let's try it nevertheless. Please take out your mobiles. Most of you, most of you use mobile telephones. So grab your mobiles, and we want to have three surveys which may provide an insight into expert surveys. So open up Slido.com. I'm sure you know this uh, website. Enter 9370 event, so 9370, and you will see following survey where you can, there's a multiple choice available in which fields improvement should be made so that uh, society would engage in solving environmental problems in a more qualitative way. The first vote is choose already is present, the developed environmental education is the first. We have a new president elected in Latvia. Let's, how many votes did he receive? 61? Okay, okay, back to our, back to our uh, topics. So, so 16 people voted already, so this survey is going to continue, and here you can mark what should we do more in order society's involvement would increase in solving environmental problems, so we have larger impulse, and, and uh, here we see that uh, there is a uh, much attention put to education, so it's a long-term approach. We are going to have a few more surveys. Please participate. Okay, Mr. Janis Brisges from Green Liberty. Where are you staying up there, or would you like to come forward? I don't know how to best introduce with the topic. I have no clue what you are going to say, but uh, regarding environmental management, governance topics, how do we manage these things, what do we do well, how do we proceed, what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses. OECD review says that we are doing good, but perhaps you see it in a different way. And also, if I can add to this discussion, and I would call to everyone, please be active. The Minister for Environment said that we should choose priorities. There's a large, large area of what we need to tackle, and obviously there's 
Most likely we are not going to have enough power to tackle everything, so what would be uh, the most important things which come together with, uh, with what OECD says? So perhaps uh, the 15 minutes should be devoted uh, to these two questions, priorities of society and priorities. Janis Brisga says, I'm going to speak from my experience in working in environmental organizations in Green Liberty, but also others. I'm working there for 20 minutes and also from academic experience. I, I work uh, also at the University of Latvia, so perhaps this is also more uh, also academic uh, perspective to this topic. So the first about the involvement of society and mechanisms how to improve environmental governments and management. We in Green Liberty, what we did last year, we prepared the uh, environmental governance uh, review and the receiver of the European uh, Commission. And uh, that's something similar to this review. And uh, these both reviews, they are they are close in their recommendations and findings. Just few examples which uh, follow from this environmental uh, governance uh, re review. I also wanted to mention integration of environment, uh, integration of environmental topics in different sectors. This is one of the main tasks which. Uh, we should address, and I think there are also some shortcomings. We speak for it for tens of years, and most likely we are going to continue to speak on this in next, also in the next 10 years. As for uh, legislative framework, uh, Latvia usually is found to be one of the one of one of the best performers. We 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 adopt uh, many. European directives in a very efficient way, especially in the environment. But then as for implementing and wider, deeper integration of environmental topics in, the, in our country, we have lots to do, in my opinion. So in the previous speeches from the colleagues, experts from the OECD, we really heard that that pressure on environment is uh, not appearing from the blue sky, but we must really evaluate uh, public transportation, agriculture, forestry, as environment pressures really come and emerge from those industries. And we sometimes really see in Latin that environment policy uh, should be umbrella uh, policy, especially regarding um, the uh, topics and uh, job uh, done by and provided by the Intergovernmental uh, Cooperation Coordination Agency or Center. Uh, regarding the different state authorities, public authorities, non governmental organizations, and so on, how they are integrated into the environment performance and environment governance when uh, looking at the actions by Ministry of Environment and Regional uh, Development, sometimes it seems quite impossible to prove. And I have heard from several ministers of agriculture that they are working for the co customer, and customer is a farmer. And for the operators, transport operators are customers for the Ministry of uh, Public Transport of Transportation. The Ministry of Health is taking care of the customer customers which are uh, medical establishments and so on, but where the public actually is. And it uh, seems that the state is as in Russian uh, fairy tale. So we will, we must choose among three roads and each of the roads has its uh, threats and dangers, and there is no a golden middle way to choose with less evil or better goodness. So what is the public interest and public good actually is, what public benefit would consist of? And if we are taking perspective of environmental sector, one of the approaches existing and used in the world is ecosystem services, and these are 
uh, turning natural values uh, into monetary means. So to participate in the market, and we must uh, discuss uh, nature as a natural capital in capitalist uh, capitalism terminology. And this approach is much criticized because it's um, impossible to really uh, classify and define a value to some natural values and natural resources. Of course, we have several projects in the pipeline, but of course, policy um, and national policies and strategies use that quite rarely. So regarding priorities, I would like to uh, address that question to you, as uh, you have uh, discussed that different countries. So, uh, our challenge is that in different industries, in different sectors, it's really hard to integrate uh, the environment. The uh, Ministry of Environment is running around trying to persuade different ministries, like Ministry of Agriculture and so on. All the good practices uh, or good examples from other countries, some conclusions already made in some countries, I have participated in different events. We are repeating that. Uh, uh, every sector is quite isolated, and uh, there is now such comprehensive approach. Would you have any recommendation regarding that? Some good practice, good example where environment would be really umbrella uh, policy for all other sectors to be integrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it seems I didn't say so long. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Well, um, <coughs> I think that I would like to uh, pick up on the point uh, made by uh, Mr. Brisga because uh, we didn't mention it, uh, neither Ivana nor myself, uh, but the question of integration of environmental uh, consideration in the overall policy of, uh, of Latvia is very important. And in the biodiversity uh, chapter, uh, we discuss uh, this in, uh, in more detail. And I would like to say that, uh, for instance, one thing that we do uh, recommend is that uh, the forest policy strategy that uh, uh, will be developed uh, next, well, it should include a long-term vision for sustainable development, uh, and it should take into account uh, the consideration of the environment. So it means that uh, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Environment and the other Ministry of Economy and others that are involved in this have to work together to come with a sustainable vision for the role of the forestry sector that will deliver uh, the benefit in terms of income and in terms of jobs, but also uh, be uh, sustainable over the, the longer term. Yes, in terms of uh, who, who, who does well this integration of, uh, of environmental aspects in uh, sectoral policies, I'm not sure there is one good example. This is, as the SG said today in his speech, Latvia is not alone, and I mean, it's in good company. I mean, this uh, issue of uh, integrating environmental aspects in uh, energy, agriculture, or transport is an issue in all countries. This is, this is typical. It's also typical that the Environment Ministry is often a weak ministry among the other ministries this in, in, in many countries. There are some good uh, ways of doing, of, of trying to, to mainstream the environment. One uh, example that we often cite, uh, quote, is the Grenelle de l'Environnement that was done in, uh, in, in France. So it's a stakeholder uh, um, engagement and per exercise to come up with uh, with measures uh, you know to how to 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 uh, how to do this um, but then it it was abandoned i mean so so uh, another good example is the framework of environmental policy objectives in sweden uh, again uh, all this uh, um, 
all these uh, frameworks of, of objectives that then are discussed in Parliament, this is uh, done in Latvia as well, the Sustainable Development Strategy in Latvia was adopt by, adopted by the Parliament and is also, uh, you know, reviewed uh, systematically. Uh, so why is, is the environment not that well mainstreamed if the mechanism is in place? Political will? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the mechanism is there. Yeah, Paldies. It seems that political will emerges from the political demand, and that is a question to education and education system. Perhaps we could uh, discuss uh, the second part on priorities, and we could really uh, participate. That is really a wide range of topics, air quality, public transportation, and of course they are quite interlinked and interrelated, but we should pay uh, and we should set priorities. So what would be priorities? What would be the most important? It would be really hard for me to outline or one of the topics mentioned, but continuing the topic of integration, we must really uh, develop those mechanisms uh, which provide and facilitate. We have that mechanisms like consulting uh, councils, advisory councils, at working uh, under auspice of different stakeholders and other ministries, including Ministry of Environment, where Ministry of Environment could also participate as one of the stakeholders. We have have quite many uh, public engagement mechanisms. Unfortunately, civic society, the engagement is quite weak, and um, uh, perception of impact it might uh, provide and ensure is also quite poor. But the question is, if uh, there is no interest among politicians, so politician, if um, there is perception that uh, politicians are not willing to facilitate or promote something, then civic society and society in general is uh, quite unresponsive as well. But uh, regarding air uh, quality, the monitoring system exists, but it must be at the level that information would be quite clear and understandable and perceivable. And if uh, the government or the municipal, local governments are not doing that, then, uh, for instance, NGOs working on the streets uh, in inviting people and encouraging people to install those microscopic dust systems and so on. So that people can follow to air pollution status and also manage to achieve changes in air, air protection policy. And last example I wanted to mention is a mobile application with the SOS and many people use it and the people it makes uh, state uh, governance institutions to react to a breach of environmental uh, uh, policy, and it also provides provides opportunity for exchange of information be between society and the governance. So there are mechanisms yeah. present, and we can continue to speak on this. Who else would like to participate as a moderator? We can hand the microphone around large and small things we should be paying attention to. Please. One by one. Okay. Let's see the results of our votes. Voting. Uh, developed environmental education is the most important. I think the representatives of ministry uh, are uh, noting the results of our survey. It's a selective group present here. It's, uh, it's really interesting to hear from you. Can we load the, the next survey, please? Uh, and then, uh, so we can come to the next uh, session, and Mr. Vesper is about planning how should we do. So I invite all present to go to slido.com, and here's a survey. The question is how, in your opinion, what is the most important loan of uh, 
policy planning. The first one is... Uh, Okay, it's, uh, it's moving around. I don't know which was the first, which was second. It's transparency of results. I think one of the things which was present in the review was a recommendation to provide larger, uh, larger rights to your center, so make you like a super ministry who would help to tackle this topics. There was a question. There was a question. Okay, please. Partially to this and also to what experts of Julia Glusha, Riga Technical University, Environmental uh, Institute. My question is what I didn't hear from presentation, but perhaps it's in the big review. It's about intersectorial and cooperation. How bioeconomy topics were integrated or reviewed or surveyed intersectorial cooperation. The second question trend of uh, possibilities for cooperation, what is good, what is bad, uh, regarding resilience to climate change. No. Any comments on this? Vai ir kādi jautājums? Lūdzu, šis ir vienīgais jautājums, kas mums ir no auditorijas. Mums uz to ir jāatbildi. Tātad atkārtēt, lūdzu, jautājums. So the questions are whether the report, how and whether and how the report looked at these issues. So more at the level of cooperation within the ministries and what should be done. Okay. So we looked at the, there is there is a whole chapter on uh, on governance. So and how, how ministries uh, talk to each other and, and what should be done. <clears throat> so on paper. Uh, Things are going uh, pretty well in the sense that uh, there's, a, there's even a, a mechanism, the cross-sectoral uh, coordination center that, that looks at, at uh, uh, interministerial coordination. But if you, if you are asking me specifically, or asking us specifically about bioeconomy, uh, we looked at this um, not from this governance uh, perspective. So we know there's a bioeconomy strategy. We know the role of biomass in, uh, we analyze the role of biomass in the energy uh, and uh, in the economy uh, more broadly. Uh, one of the recommendations of, uh, of, uh, of the report is precisely to assess more in depth um, uh, the, the cost and benefits of using biomass uh, uh, or expanding the use of biomass uh, uh, in, uh, in Latvia. Because there are definitely benefits, but there are also costs uh, in terms of, uh, for example, air pollution or also removing, uh, reducing the absorption capacity for greenhouse gas emissions. So, so the point is that we know there have been assessment, but also these assessments actually calls for more assessment. So, this should be done. And on, um, on resilience to climate change, this, has, uh, this is not uh, one of the main focuses of, of, uh, of DPR, actually, uh, of the Environmental Performance Review. Actually, it was, uh, looked at, uh, we looked at it very superficially. So we, uh, mm -hmm. we didn't. We didn't Paldies, jā. Lietas, kas ir un kas nav iekšā. Uh, pirms, yeah. Yeah, could please. I just mm -hmm. add uh, one point on uh, one of the recommendations that we have uh, <coughs> in Chapter 2 about the cross-sectoral coordination center. That is a um, task to do the, the coordination across uh, ministries, and it is done uh, through the prime minister's office. 
and uh, it's responsible for implementing the sustainable development strategy and national development plans and also promoting the coherence across sectors. And uh, what we say here is that uh, uh, it works, they do meet uh, regularly, uh, but they only have an advisory role. Uh, so um, its opinion may be discussed in the cabinet, but they are not binding. Uh, so we believe that this is insufficient to ensure good interministerial coordination on environmentally related policies. So we are calling for considering uh, a stronger role for this interministerial um, coordination center. Yeah, please. Uh, Mr. Lana Muzang. Now we're switching to English. Sometimes it might be easier to communicate. Mm. Uh, yes, I um, are there some <laughs> other questions? Okay, if there are no further questions, I'd like to give the floor to you, Vladislavs. Uh, so I see here that uh, we shouldn't allow politicians to, to do promises which are not fulfilled. I think we need someone who regularly addresses this. Uh, we already heard that national development plan is going to be developed. So, how in these planning documents, one of the challenges, if I understand it correctly, in this report, that our planning documents, the time frame, does not follow the needs, especially, for example, for climate policy. So could you please explain yeah. how is this national development plan is going to be developed? Vladislav, yes, sir. thank you that you stayed for so long in this room. Two hours is a challenge, starting with waiting for 20 hours. I also wanted to say thank you to the Ministry for Environmental Protection and Regional Development for possibility to be here. Thanks to OECD for very good uh, snapshot of uh, what's going on regarding our environment and also for recommendations made. I think it's a very good contribution to the process to uh, national development plan. And, and uh, now, uh, speaking on a more serious note and answering about uh, strengthening the role of uh, cross-coordinational uh, center, we can speak of different things, how it should be strengthened, but we should uh, be clear it's not enough to say that something needs to be done, uh, but uh, also the action plan should be ready. Do, do we provide the rights of veto? Do we change uh, status of ministries? Do we uh, give some other rights in order this power can be increased in regarding certain questions? It should be more specific offer. Uh, currently, as colleagues from OECD already mentioned, we speak with National Development Strategy of Latvia. We are the ones who coordinate and supervise this process, and uh, there we also have uh, large opportunities to move in that direction, which we see as the most uh, balanced and suited to national interests. Therefore, we can uh, influence uh, the sectorial interests because uh, uh, ministers are the ones who represent these sectors, but then we can uh, speak out our wishes and the, it's a different uh, uh, level of de detailness we work at. Now, uh, speaking of today's topic, I wanted to cover it from two perspectives. The first is, is from planning uh, process perspective, and the second is green growth and national development plan. Okay, uh, national development plan is being developed. There's a hundred people team, six uh, working groups. Uh, we outlined the uh, action directions. Enough, we speak what goals we are going to put forward. We didn't reach clear actions and measures. 
on, on the rich uh, direction. But this is a time of few months to come to that point, and OECD recommendations is a very good contribution which we can use in this process. What is important regarding National Development Plan is to see what are challenges and problems for the development in our country, where we are behind others and what's critical, what's important, so that we can provide economic growth at the same time uh, keeping sustainability of resources that we respect uh, uh, long-term sustainability goals and uh, Latvia National Development Strategy uh, 2030 that we can contribute uh, uh, reaching uh, United Nations uh, goals and uh, for uh, uh, Paris Agreement goals and uh, looking on this planning system altogether, I think this system is good. Someone already said that this legal framework is good. The question is about implementation and how this process is organized. Is it uh, professionally done, if I can put it so? And uh, as for this, I think we first should look at this horizontal uh, aspects, like for example, we work or we speak uh, and look things at macro level, who are the stakeholders who should be involved in solving uh, macro policies uh, so that uh, the state can move forward successfully. It's also important what the um, minister said, we should agree upon priorities because we have as much resources as we do, even though we receive a significant amount of money from EU structural funds and it's going to continue also in the next planning period. But we should also understand that uh, our wishes are exceeding several times opportunities we have, in fact, and now uh, thinking of long-term perspective, I think we also should be speaking that in the problem is not in the planning system. No one forbids us to put forward long-term plans, let's say, until 2050, and taking this as an origin point uh, and to take this as a basis for planning our plans until 2030, a longer term, and keeping this end points, where do we want it to be in 2050, say climate goals, say forest development goals, and also other goals. It is important to speak of that, that it's very important to, for us to agree what are the goals are and how do we measure it. Mr. Stiglitz said that what you measure determines what you do, and if you choose wrong measures and goals, then most likely you would not be doing what you really need to do. And uh, here it's important to choose indicators which are internationally can be compared and which according to our national development level are the most significant. There was also a question of politicians, mm, so they do not promise what they do not deliver. I think uh, one thing related to setting goals is top question of politicians, how responsible are they for confirming the goals, but I also think also it's important to speak of experts uh, that the aims are realistic and at the same time also ambitious enough. It's important that when the plan has been passed, also financing comes along so the targets can be reached. We know that uh, there are some uh, targets which are not followed, say uh, processing industry, direct investments uh, decreased, local investments including uh, funds is only to several tens of millions and then we cannot hope that we are going to receive 20 percent of processing industry out of GDP. So this is about planning as a process and then coming to national uh, development process and green growth. 
In national development uh, plan, there are several challenges. Waste managing biological diversity are some of them which are evaluated in national development plan, but here the, we are not going to analyze them, as already was mentioned, and now it's about uh, green growth, and how do we see it today? First of all, we sh I should mention two dimensions. Green growth, as Mr. Guri has said, we can double capacity of uh, plants and uh, make more uh, products, but of course we are not becoming more pro productive we can uh, do things and do them more eff effectively with less resources, and then partially we are going to promote green growth. But I think more important is uh, the mention of green growth is that we are uh, developing such uh, industries, such sectors which consume resources uh, minimally or do not consume at all. So that would be smart growth. Where we would have uh, completely or almost completely decoupled from uh, natural resource consumption. And I think that um, this is one of the objectives for uh, oil. And we must, uh, I'm sorry, for the um, national development plan is uh, free priorities, which would be productivity, meaning not only uh, productivity of entrepreneurs, of enterprises uh, when they are producing more or selling at a more expensive price, but productivity and efficiency in all the processes and in a green growth, uh, uh, both uh, energy performance and energy efficiency would be another topic for domestic as well as an industrial use and transportation and vehicle energy for agriculture and for forestry that would be another chapter of national development plan and we must discuss that it is really crucial for us to have precise actions precise mechanisms and tools we would be able to reduce those GHG G emissions and providing that agricultural and economic growth is not hindered, is not deaccelerated, and that those smart green technologies um, development wave is catched on and distributed to others. That would be one of the most ambitious objectives or goals to be pursued. And to sum up, I would like to mention that green growth should be considered and uh, channeled towards uh, circular economy and bioeconomy as we can reduce uh, waste generation, as we can use waste as a raw material. We must think on rigid technologies and we must really pursue for smart technologies. Uh, improving budget balance, uh, competitiveness of our businesses, and improve economic um, self-sufficiency of the country, create new jobs, and achieve climate objectives at the same time. And to conclude, I would like to mention that I hope that we managed to define that level of action so that it would not be just a slogan and only our words that we should do, improve, imperfect, and so on. What we are expecting from in the process of the National Development plan and from all the stakeholders and all those who will be participating in that in public discussion and public consultation at uh, the uh, late summer so that our green growth would be integrated. Thank you so much. So let us wait uh, and expect uh, for the next discussion and how large impact and impetus that would provide for fruitful action. So we have uh, really close uh, re um, in 10 minutes and we would have uh, what are the results of our active poll are. Question about money. How much you would be ready to 
pay from your taxes to solve environmental challenges so that environmental performance in Latvia and the condition of Latvian nature would improve by 2030. So how much you would be ready to add up, top up to the taxes you already pay so that environment would improve by 2030. I might pay more than 50 euro if results would be clear and transparent. Not more than 50 euros a year, up to 10 years, uh, euros per year, nothing in addition, or I am not paying taxes, which is the last possible answer. Uh, review also has quite a dis wide discussion on taxes and taxation policy, because we are coming to economic incentives uh, and motivations, how something could be accelerated or deaccelerated in terms of environment and environmental performance. And uh, Ms. Alda Vanaga should be given the floor as well. And you have uh, precisely 32 seconds. Of course, I'm joking. Anyway, um, the chapter on uh, taxes, uh, tax uh, incentives and pricing, and this is really a wide range of opportunities for that. So economic instruments for green growth, and this recommendation is in increasing taxes, and if we are considering how taxes were raised, so starting from the 20, 2002, so uh, the Minister of, uh, Minister of Economy of that time understood that Swedes were increasing the tax uh, for uh, promoting energy performance and introducing a tax is a very sensitive issue, but I will try to brief you on several factors because we are working on the national uh, energy and climate plan. We are trying to analyze various scenarios, various uh, carrying out different SWOT analysis, and there are different political instruments having um, many of economic nature as well. I would like to mention three challenges, major uh, challenges, which is uh, efficient energy user and consumer is thinking and is doing and acting, which is not characteristic for Latvia. Second is uh, renewables, a substitute fossil, um, fossils, and uh, reducing impact on climate change. So uh, we understand that environment is uh, becoming worse and worse, but uh, the last challenge would be not to burn everything that could be burnt. So we have European Union stipulated objectives we are committed to meet. We have huge potential in improving energy efficiency, and you have also seen in the presentation by OECD experts presented today, we have a lot of money to implement and it is falling from the sky called European Union. So we have a lot of many opportunities and I do not know why so energy efficiency could be improved by thermal uh, insulation of the dwelling houses. Nobody is standing in the queue at Altum, which is um, the uh, summarizing uh, institution for these uh, state guarantees and proposals offered from elsewhere for financing and we also uh, talking about energy efficiency to be raised, energy performance to be improved. We need a stable uh, instrument to do so on one of the proposals. Uh, we are not sure that we will manage to uh, persuade the Ministry of Economy that is motivating proposal. We are rewarding those who are uh, doing and acting. For instance, I have a swimming pool in the midst of forest. I'm warming it up, heating it up throughout the year. I, I have a lot of wood for that, and I pay a lot. But our proposal is for multi-story dwelling houses. There is um, a Latvian 
construction regulations and rules, those who are meeting those standards are good ones and are rewarded. And when answering to the poll, so paying in addition in taxes, we are spending that money for those who are ready to act. And that fund would be foundation would be uh, working and functioning. If you are not ready to pay, you join the society of consumers. And we, are, uh, we would spending that foundation raised from the tax increase for uh, energy uh, efficiency. Uh, is it related and relevant for environmental protection? Uh, yes, it is, but will we manage? No. <laughs> if you do not have, I think I really see that you would really start at the program uh, of incentives. No, I will not. But the second uh, issue is about the use of renewables. So the first uh, example is sun. We cannot do anything. And somebody says again that is sun really bright in the sky in Latvia? Yes, it is, because in Sweden it is already widespread technology. Population is very active in that. But we are complaining about that we do not have sunny day, but actually we have a lot if compared to other countries because we have clearer air and we can um, absorb on one uh, solar panel more intense energy than in other more sunny countries where the air pollution is more. So we didn't do nothing, we didn't do anything for many years, subsidies or earmarked, the subsidies were stopped and we are in the situation like that. This is a genius. A graph showing how steep uh, decline in the use of uh, solar panels, starting from the 2005 to 2030, with the specific capital investment of 1,000 euro per megawatt install capacity. Uh, currently, we are, we are not. Uh, uh, we are not very greedy. We are not making and installing bigger solar panels and so on. We are installing the capacity we actually need for covering our energy needs. But it depends on the health condition, how long a person would live. And the question is, what is renew uh, the future of? of the renewables, most probably the sun, but not everything will be covered by sun. And what other proportion would be? There is wind, we cannot build wind farms because population uh, do not like them because they are really hindering uh, natural sceneries and landscapes and so on. So if you remember when one of the hydropower plants were built on a Daugo river in Daugo built on there was a Latvian saying for that, that better in a wooden uh, shoes and very poor, but without a hydropower plant on our river Daukova. So we have at the same situation again. So, and we must build our wind farms on land. And the question we have uh, friends of nature, they are saying, no, 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 that is burden, there is impact, we cannot afford. For that, please think how many factories we have built and how much our national economy has uh, lost if really good large-scale projects were uh, failed instead of promoting uh, development of our country. And another scenario is circular economy. We can, can we... Uh, sort of ways we could do so earlier, but there are many things to invest more. We can recycle them, we can uh, produce products with high value added, we can do much, but we are still discussing, talking, we are not based on discussions uh, based on scientific research, on scientific discoveries. 
who uh, among you knows that rotten bread can be used for bioplastic? Who knows that uh, dry bread can be used for sugar production? And if we are looking around what we are uh, wasting in the waste bin, and we are asking the question why neighbor is not doing so, why the Ministry of Environment doesn't make us to do so, and so on. But it depends only on us. And information and knowledge is the basis for everything. And if we are speaking about economic instrument, that is a tax for not separating waste. And if we are discussing opportunity of the tax on that, everything, everybody would be against the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Economy, and so on. But perhaps we need some stimulation and motivation. Perhaps we could really associate in some kind of associations of friends of like-minded people, like grants and subsidies for recyclers and for producers, for instance, somebody really starts processing dry bread into sugar or rotten bread into microplastic products, that would be really great, and that would depend on um, politics only. So, a round of applause to the speaker. And uh, now we are coming to the close of our event. There are different topics, and I think uh, perhaps we should uh, read uh, the recommendations to detail. And then there's a question also of political will to implement and follow through on this. So, out of all this, Aldo was all at Varam, uh, Ministry of Environment. But before we give the floor to Ms. Ozola, another survey, uh, what should be our priorities in the next 10 years? We should solve only one environmental problem. Which should we tackle? You, as a, uh, experts being present here, could you please uh, indicate just one? while Alda, while Alda yeah, speaks. Code. Code is Q903. Q903. Can we enter the system? Q903. Come back in to the active poll. And then you can answer also to policy makers. OK, Alda, now the summary to all of this. I think it's very an easy job after such a long and prolonged session, but the uh, main things which we should uh, take home. Well, indeed, it's not very easy to sum up this. We've had a long day behind you and, and uh, Focus is OECD uh, recommendation. Together there are 46 recommendations. And up till now, we have not tried to assign priorities to this. And these are really different. If I tried uh, to classify, group these recommendations, there are topics uh, that can be sold through planning documents. We've heard uh, regarding national development strategy, and these planning documents show what's important to the state, what's important to sectors, and solutions would be provided, and largely at least partly, it's up to uh, public servants, officials. In national development strategy, it would be important. Also, some policy priorities. Perhaps you've noted that the climate policy over the last few weeks has 
done a lot and uh, changed their attitude towards this. So this political will, this abstract, uh, abstract notion we touched upon several times, indeed has an uh, impact on priorities. What uh, this and next year we are going to enter in this medium term documents. Second thing is uh, more practical, uh, not into details of waste and biodiversity. Time to time it was brought up regarding CO2 tax and air pollution. Those are taxes. Taxes, uh, price signals for waste management definitely, for CO2 as well, for air quality, same. And this is a question if uh, there is wish to uh, uh, make uh, excise tax equal between uh, gasoline and uh, diesel, but uh, this is a question which largely is going to be decided by politicians. We have recommendations by OECD on the table, and then we are going to move this, but uh, how long or how slow things are going to happen. There are many unknowns. As for biodiversity, I think we also should look into compensation mechanisms. One of the OECD conclusions was that uh, environmental taxes in Latvia uh, is uh, relatively large in Latvian budget as compared to OECD average numbers, but the problem is that they do not come back into reaching incomes do not to come back into reaching environmental goals and this can be changed rather in a relatively easy way so establish a strong uh, feedback link and there also was a question if you are ready to pay more tax if you know where the money goes perhaps this could be easier to do just to establish this strong link to show it this uh, nexus between environmental protection goals and money. Now just another comment how to integrate Janis has become his address. I think that each country had their own recipe. There is no the most successful approach, but what we see from other European OECD countries, there, there are ministries who also work with environmental protection. Those are becoming less and less. For example, in Latvia, we also cover uh, regional questions, digitalization. There is also some other countries. Uh, they have environmental ministries together with forestry or agriculture. It's uh, depending on the specifics of each country. So, so there are different approaches in different countries. And this is a way to, to, to look upon things, perhaps. Okay, now we have uh, uh, something to read. There are uh, near 50 recommendations when OECD is going to prepare next report in five, six years, if I understand. I understand we have uh, implemented all of these recommendations. And uh, while interpreting takes place, I wanted to comment what happens with the recommendations. Normally, in five years' time, Latvia is going to have to report how, what, how, how successful are we with implementing, implementing these recommendations, what have we done. We are not going to shelf them and let them dust. So we are you going to use these recommendations? The moderator says, yes, I'm sure everything is going to be implemented. Thank you all for today. So there's a feed for thought. And I think this brainstorm we had 
hopefully is, is going to provide uh, also some new ideas to something to think and also create some political uh, pulses for things we all know. Nevertheless, when someone from uh, a side comes and tells that perhaps political will also goes up. Thank you to all. So we have a new president also. And our event is over. Thank you for participating. Well, I'm so glad I showed them.